What's up guys, this is your boy Archie Medallion. I got another YouTube battle for you today and I'm sorry I am using my old YouTube team. I did promise new teams and I actually do have a new NU team. Unfortunately I can't really find anybody who wants to battle NU. So especially since the Smoke and Wi-Fi Battle Finder is currently down, so I really can't find anybody, so I have to go I have to get what I what I can get and I was able to get a UU battle with someone I, I uploaded before. His name is 97 Pedro Cos. You should really go check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description yet again. He's a really good battler. But anyway, let's look at the teams. Now I see an Umbreon, a Glagger, and a Shaman. That's me thinking it's defensive core right there. Um obviously physically defensive Glagger possible special defensive uh, Umbreon and a somewhat bulky Shaman. That's what I'm guessing it's going to be. And I'm going to have to look out for U-turns with me and Chow, Tornadus and our mana tanks to do a hefty chunk to my room cuts as well as can give them a lot of switch initiatives. Now obviously the Nermanitan and uh, Miantra kind of shut down my Bisharp however I should be able to take out the Nermanitan with a uh, Sucker Punch if it is all enough health, and I can definitely do some nice damage to that Tornadus. Now, uh, Rotom Cut can, even though I found out I did not have HP Fire again, which I gotta fix again, it can definitely do some decent chunk of damage to the Shaman, and it can take out the Glider pretty easily as long as do some damage on the Tornadus. Um, a Mogo being a Mogo can do whatever. And really, that's really about it. The Mianchal is pretty much a big threat. The Manta is a big threat. Uh, Tornadus is a big threat. That's really all, I, that's really all it is. Um, so anyway, why don't we get started with the game? Uh, he's going to lead off with Mianchal. I'm going to lead off with Mianchal. So it's Mianchal versus Mianchal. First turn, as he is going to be able to win the speed tie, I think. And uh, fake out my Mianchal. But this does show me that he is Life Lord, which doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Because, well... Yeah, he probably carries regenerators, so the life of damage won't be doing that much. Anyway, I end up switching out into my Juvia or my Suicune, knowing a high jump, jump kick is going to come. However, even though I could have switched out into Omoga, I just wanted to see how much damage it would do to my physically defensive uh, Suicune. So I did that anyway. But anyway, as you see here, I'm going to switch out into my Loxus now, knowing that I could probably survive another high jump kick to go for the Surf. So he's probably going to go for the U-turn, as he does end up going for the U-turn. does little to no damage on my physically defensive uh, Moga as he's going to decide to switch out into his uh, Boo or his Glider. And Glider walls me pretty well since I do carry HP Grass over HP Ice and I can't really touch him. So I'm going to switch out here not knowing if he wants the Toxic or set up Self Rocks but I end up going out into my Bisharp just in case he did decide to set up to, to hit me with a Toxic then I would have been able to taunt the Glider stopping him from setting up those rocks. Unfortunately, he does go for rocks first, but since I know he probably carries the Earthquake, I'm going to switch in my Loxus yet again, that way I can Encore him into it. Unfortunately, he does switch out and goes into his Darmanitan, which really sucks because he basically got switch initiative of me again, and this Darmanitan is scary because nothing on my t team wants to take the Flare Blitz. However, I predict him, and I predict him to go for the U-turn, as he does end up going for that U-turn, allowing, allowing me to finally play a little offensive because he's forced to go out to Umbria who can handle my Loxus pretty well, however I do carry the Baton Pass, because I do, I'm able to finally get the switch initiative that I needed, and which allows me to set out Sensei, and allows me to be offensive. Now I know the Protect is going to come, so I'm going to go straight for the U-turn, making him think that I'm just going to go for the switch out, which means he'll be comfortable leaving his Umbreon in, and that means I can hit him with a high jump kick and knock out the Umbreon right off the bat, so it's a quick 6-5 lead to me, thanks to a little of my games with uh, Protect. And just so for y'all watching, whenever it's Umbreon versus anything with high jump kick, if you're the guy with high jump kick, always go for U-turn first, or any or something that's not high jump kick first, because they will always protect and then hit him for a high jump because they think you're going to switch or something. But anyway, this time a mana tank comes in. I don't know if it's, if it's a Scarf or a Bandit at this point. So I'm really forced to go out into Loxus as a Death Fodder and hope that I can uh, and hope that I don't go down to it. But anyway, um, I end up sending out my Suicune at this point, thinking that it can most likely survive Flare Blitz and then take him out. But unfortunately, he does go out to Shaman, which was a beautiful play on his part, because Shaman can pretty much take those hits for days. And because he's able to take those hits for days, I'm forced to switch out, knowing that the Sea Flare is going to come, and I'm going to go out to my room and cut, thinking that I can most likely take this, and hoping he does not go for the Ice Beam or whatever. But he ends up going for the Earth Power, which, you know, because I have Levitate, you know, ends up helping. And then he ends up going for the Earth Power again, as I'm going to go for the eight Hidden Power, Thinking it's Hidden Power Fire at this time, but unfortunately it's not. As you see, it does a decent chunk. Not as much as I wish, but well, well, 
Now you have to switch out going out to Starmanitan, and because it was an HP fire, I had no problem staying in and doing it. Because, well, it's not HP fire, it's not going to be resisted, and it's probably HP dark. And as you see, it does a hefty amount of damage to that Darmanitan, which is beautiful, because I need as much residual damage on it as possible. And Flare Blitz is only going to whittle it down. So, I switch out on my Suicune, knowing I could probably survive when, as you see, I am able to survive it, which is beautiful. So that means not only am I able to get that one turn of recoil damage from Flare Blitz, I'm actually able to get two turns of recoil damage with Flare Blitz. And I decide to stay in with Suicune, knowing that if he goes for Flare Blitz, he gets some form of damage on him. And if he goes for the U-turn, you know, I get switch initiative. So, either way, it was a win-win. Unfortunately, my Suicune did have to go down. But once again, I need as much damage on the man in 10 as possible. Now, I'm going to send in my Sensei now, knowing that the Fake Out can most likely take this thing out. So, he's going to switch out as I really should have predicted this glider switching, but I didn't. I played it safe, went straight for the fake out, knowing that their Manitan is a huge threat, and I had, I was in no room to over predict. Anyway, I go for the U-turn now, really because I can't touch this thing, and um, I'm going to decide to switch out into my Damao, or my Bisharp yet again, really just because I want to bait him to go for the Earthquake, because I know the Toxic is going to come. I know for a fact it's going to come. So, now that I have the Bisharp in here, I know he's going to go for the Earthquake, so I'm going to pull a double switch back out into my Rotom Cut, mainly because I did not want my Rotom Cut Toxic, because it can do some nice damage to his team, and at the same time, I know I wanted a free switch into it, taking no damage, because I don't need any damage on this Rotom Cut. I need Rotom Cut to, to really take out this Gligar and can do some massive damage to the Tornadus and, and um, the uh, Mian Chao. But anyway, unfortunately, he does survive with 4 HP, which really, really sucks. And he's able to toxic my Rotom Cut. So all those efforts to make sure my Rotom Cut wasn't toxic was completely useless because he ends up getting toxic anyway. Anyway, he ends up sending out Mian Chao, and I'm at minus two special attacks. So he figured he could take it, and you turn out. Unfortunately for him, I do land the crit and then completely one-shots this Mian Chao. So the, a huge threat on his team is gone, and now... The, he only really has the Darmanitan and the Tornadus that can really do a lot of damage to me. And this Darmanitan is low health, so I might be able to, uh, I might be able to live this if I decide to sack one of my Pokemon. And as you see, I do decide to sack my Bisharp, because other than Sucker Punch on the Tornadus, I don't really need it that much. And because I do decide to sack the Bisharp, the, um, Darmanitan does kill itself thanks to the recoil damage. Now that's a double down, and he's going to send out his 97, his Tornadus, and at this point, even though I did just sack, out, sack my Bisharp, this Tornadus scared the crap out of me. So I'm going to go for the Fake Out now, just because I need as much residual damage on it as possible, and then I'm going to quickly switch out into my Porygon 2, knowing that I can most likely take any hit other than a Focus Blast from him. As I, as I do do just that, he ends up going for the Hurricane, which really, really sucks, but he misses, which is beautiful. And now, because of that, I know for a fact I can take this Focus Blast, no problem. As yet, I'm going for the Focus Blast. I know I'm not going to go down. It will do some nice damage, but I'm not going to go down. And because of this, I'm able to hit him with a Thunderbolt, which is beautiful, because it's a well-needed residual damage. Fortunately, I don't get the Paralyzation. However, because I did trace the Prankster, I'm, I can easily just recover stall him until Focus Blast missed, or I get enough health to the point where I will survive a Focus Blast. I'm able to take it out with an, either an Ice Beam or a Thunderbolt. But anyway, once again, I I'm trying to recover so I'm hoping Focus Blast finally becomes Focus Miss, because whenever I burst somebody, they never miss the Focus Blast, but when I use Focus Blast, I miss every single time, which is ridiculous. And as you see, he hits another Focus Blast. He hits three Focus Blasts in a row. That never happens to me, ever. But at this point, I hit high enough health for to the where I can just go for the Ice Beam, and he knows this, so he's going to go for the U-Turn. He's going to switch out into his... um. Gligar, which is a really risky play because I could have easily just have went for the Ice Beam, no problem. But, you know, I decided to switch out now, go out into my Rotom Cut, figuring that he's going to be able to outspeed and he's going to land the Toxic. And I don't want him to hit me with the Toxic because if he does hit me with that Toxic, then I'm basically screwed because this Porygon 2 is the, key, is the key to my victory at this point. Now... Obviously, he's he's gonna switch out. He's gonna go out into his Shiloh or his um uh Shaman. As I end up going for the hidden power, because at that range, I figured hidden power could two shot that uh Gliger. And at the same time, I don't want to sit there and go for the Volt Switch, doing no damage to the Shaman. Unfortunately, the Shaman will be able to kill me off with the Seed Flare. 
but it's still looking good for me because I still have Sensei. And Sensei can fake out U-turn anything, and at this range of health, U-turn fake out U-turn could definitely take out the Shaman. And he knows this, so he's going to switch out, go on to his Glagger as I go for the U-turn. And this is when I'm happy that I carry Ice Beam on my Porygon 2. Because I carry the Ice Beam on Porygon 2, I have a huge chance of winning this. Glagger has times for weakness to Ice Beam. Shaman is at low enough health to the point where Ice Beam can one-shot it. And Tornadus is at low enough health to the point where Ice Beam can KO. So, as long as I keep my health above the range of his Tornadus's focus blast i should be able to win this game especially since i just traced this immunity from the glider so i can't even be poisoned so at this point i'm looking good i'm looking really good as long as i can keep my hp up now he goes for another roost and at this point i know that the glider can't really touch me earthquake's not going to do that much so i'm just going to go straight for the ice beam just ko this glider because even if my porygon 2 does manage to go down my Mian Chao can possibly take out that Tornadus with the fake out. Anyway, he ends up going for the Earthquake, and as I said before, it does nothing. So I'm going to hit this Glagger with the Ice Beam, and it's going to take it out this time because he didn't roost up, so his flying typing is still in effect. Now he's going to end up sending in the Shaman, and even though I know C I knew he was going to attack me, which is a smarter play to go out to Shaman first, but at the same time, I'm going to go for the Recover, knowing that I need to keep my HP up. So anyway, that C Flare doesn't do enough damage to the point where I won't be in green health so I figured at this point I can just kill off the shaman with the ice beam figuring that you know the um the uh the um focus blast won't be able to take me out at this point and in case it does take me out then I should be able to knock it knock the tornadoes out with the fake out from Yancha however unfortunately for him he does manage to finally miss the focus blast which was about time you did bro Unfortunately, you know, that's just how the game goes, and I'm able to knock out that tornado. So that's a good game, 97 Pedro Cost. I'm RG Medal. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see y'all later.